What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to add another algorithm to the list of sorting algorithms we covered in this series. This one goes by shell sort. And the shell sort algorithm is considered a generalization of the insertion sort algorithm we previously discussed. Therefore, if you haven't watched the insertion sort video or have no idea what insertion sort is, I suggest you take a look at our insertion sort video. You'll find the link in the description box below. So, as I just mentioned, shell sort is a generalization or more often referred to as an optimization to the insertion sort algorithm. But what are we optimizing exactly? If you've watched our insertion sort video, you may remember the playing cards example we gave. Since many of you liked it so much, let's bring back a similar example and expand on it. You see, if we were sorting these six cards using the insertion sort algorithm as we know it, the first card that will catch our attention is the fourth one, in our case the six of hearts, as the first three are already sorted. Now because the card preceding our six is a king, then we have to swap these two cards. Same applies to the next card or the fifth card, the seven of hearts. This one should also be swapped with the king. After this, our sorted subarray will be made of the first five out of six cards. And all we have to sort now is the last card, which is a two. You see the correct place of this card, the two of hearts, if we were sorting in ascending order, should be right at the beginning, because, well, it is the smallest card we have right now. So, if we were to apply the insertion sort algorithm on this example, what will happen is that our card will be swapped one by one with all the five cards preceding it until it reaches the front of our hand, or the first index. Now after sorting these cards, notice that we had to do five swaps to put the two of hearts in its rightful place, and not to forget the two swaps we did at the beginning for the six and the seven, making a total of seven swaps. However, imagine if the first thing we did was swap this king with the two of hearts. All we will be left with is moving the two twice to place it at the front of the cards, so if we do that, if our first move is swapping the king and the two of hearts, we will obtain the same exact sorted cards at the end, but instead of making seven swaps, we did just three, which is less than half. What we just did was using an optimized version of the insertion sort algorithm, the shell sort algorithm. This index difference between the king and the two actually has a name, and it's called a gap. Shell sort uses this gap to exchange the items that are far apart in a given array, bringing them closer to each other, hence reducing the number of swaps required for the overall sorting. This gap is then decremented until it reaches 1, and when it does, it means that we are right back to the insertion sort, because if you take a closer look, you will notice that in insertion sort, we are comparing adjacent elements, or elements having a gap of 1 between them. Let's take this array of integers as an example and try to sort it using the shell sort algorithm. For the shell sort algorithm to work, we will need to define the gap I was telling you about. Usually, our starting gap is half the number of elements sorted in the array, so in this case it is 4. What this means is that we will apply insertion sort on every 4 elements of the array starting from the gap. Let's take these elements apart and sort them. By doing that, we are making our array partially sorted, which is the best condition under which the insertion sort algorithm works. After doing that, we will have to reduce the gap. Remember, our ultimate target here is to make this gap reach 1, because when it does, we will fall into the insertion sort algorithm again, but this time, the insertion sort will deal with the partially sorted array, not a messy one, hence it will execute much faster. To reduce the gap, we usually divide it by 2, in this case, the gap will become a 2. Let's go ahead and sort every two items in the array as we did a few seconds ago when the gap was 4. And after we are done, divide the gap by 2 again. Our gap has finally reached 1. And as you can see, we only have two out-of-place elements, the minus 1 and the 25. Both of these elements require only one swap with the item preceding them, exactly like an insertion sort. Both of these swaps will be done within one iteration, and after that last iteration, our initial array will be finally sorted using the shell sort algorithm. Notice that, when our gap reached 1, we didn't have to move these last elements farther than one slot, and that is exactly why the shell sort algorithm has proven to be better than insertion sort. Now let's try to implement this algorithm together. What I did here is take exactly the same piece of code we wrote in our insertion sort video, 
which again, you can find linked in the description below. The first thing I did is just rename the class from insertion sort to shell sort, and that's our first step. We have to keep the generic parameter though. We needed to be able to use this class across several types. Also, the constructor is needed in order to initialize and take in the array that needs sorting. Until now, everything remains the same. The code you can see represents the insertion sort algorithm we covered in the previous video, and the difference between shell sort and insertion sort is that the insertion sort operation swaps adjacent elements only, whereas shell sort swaps the elements based on a defined gap. So, in the lines where the swapping is performed, and while using the compare to method, we shouldn't be swapping nor comparing an element with the one preceding it. But instead, we should be swapping or comparing an element with the one that is distant by a certain gap from it. So, in both these statements, the ones should be replaced with a gap variable. Also, instead of decrementing the j index by 1 at the end of the while loop, we should decrement it by the gap, because we are hopping from one element to another using this predefined gap. Now, in this code, a problem arises, as we are using a variable called gap, that isn't initialized anywhere yet in our code. But where should we initialize it? Remember, we said that the gap should start off as half of our array length and get divided by 2 until it reaches 1. And for every value of this gap, the code we can see in front of us should run. Guessed it? Exactly. We should wrap this code with a for loop and the iterator of this loop will be called gap. This gap will be initialized as a half of our array length and will be divided by 2 with each increment. However, as it is right now, we still have two things to fix in this implementation. The first thing is that the j-index is now being decremented by the gap everywhere in our code. And in the while condition, if we have the j greater than 0 condition as is, we will be telling this while loop that Look, if you have a case where the iterator j is equal to 1, let's say, let it go ahead to the compare to method. And in this method, if our gap was 2 or 4, like in our previous examples, we will be comparing the element at index 1 to the element at index minus 3, and this will definitely throw an index out of bounds exception. To fix this, instead of checking if j is greater than 0, what we have to do is check if j is greater or equal than the gap, and only allow it to proceed to the compare to method or to the swapping logic if this is true. We added the equals operator here, because if you recall our previous example for a gap of 4, the element sitting at index 4 was also being taken into consideration. However, this change brings with it something else something we are better off modifying in our inner for loop. If you take a closer look at the inner loop, you can see that the iteration starts at index 1. But effectively, this loop will keep incrementing the i iterator until it reaches the gap, without doing anything. Why? Because we just told the while loop that it shouldn't execute any piece of code if the j index is smaller than the gap. But on the other hand, we are also initializing the same index to start iterating from the beginning of the array, because j equals the i index. To skip these useless iterations, what we can do is start the inner for loop at the gap variable. And there you have it, the complete implementation of the shell sort algorithm. Let's go ahead and see the method we just implemented in action. To do this, I brought back the main method and the two arrays we used in the insertion sort algorithm. I also went ahead and printed the initial state of these arrays, i.e. how these numbers and strings are placed inside the arrays before we perform any kind of sorting. After calling the sort method we just coded, you can see that both arrays are now sorted. The array storing integers is sorted in ascending order, starting from the smallest integer, and the array storing strings is stored alphabetically. If you want to sort in descending order, all you have to do is replace the smaller than operator in our while loop with the greater than operator, just like we did in the insertion sort algorithm. Now, before ending the video, I want to adapt the alternative way to write the insertion sort that I provided you in the previous video to the shell sort algorithm. Additionally, and similarly to the insertion sort, the code you are about to write will generate the same output we just got. But this one is written using a combination of streams and recursion. So we are going to create a new method. Let's name it sort. It will be an overloaded version of the actual sort method. This one takes two integers as parameters. Inside this method, we are going to put the same condition we had inside the while loop, 
but as an if statement. Everything we were doing inside this while loop will remain the same, except for decrementing the j and x, of course, as this operation will be replaced with a recursive call to this method. Its first parameter will be the index minus the gap, which is the same value we had in our while loop. The second one will remain the same across all methods, as it is up to the outer for loop to change it, not the while loop. Note that this recursive call compared to the previous code we had only replaces the while loop. Therefore, we need to call this recursive method for each index we have, starting from the gap, just like our inner for loop. But to do it in a more concise way, we are going to use Java streams. This is done using an int stream ranging from the gap to whatever the length of the array is. The last step we need to implement is the outer for loop, which will wrap our int stream call. As this loop is a decrementing one, it should be written using the iterate method and not the range method, since that would give us more flexibility towards the integers we are iterating over. Calling this sort method will give you identical results to the classic shell sort implementation, and voila, the shell sort algorithm implemented in two different ways. So, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys for watching, take care, and I will see you in the next one.